So, you know, why were these partic particular areas? I don't remember the, the number of protected areas that you listed around the world. 105,000. 105, why those 105,000 and not some other set of places? And I think it's worth remembering that there are a bunch of reasons. This is just kind of four very simple reasons. Sometimes it's about single species, sometimes it's about habitat, sometimes it's a genuine effort to protect biodiversity, and many times it's a whole set of other criteria. So again, I just wanted to take you through just a, a bunch of quick photographs to get you thinking about these kind of diverse reasons why, the, why protected areas come into existence. So think about single species. Here's the classic, right? Everybody loves panda bears, and they live in one tiny part of central China, and you either take care of those, those forests, or pandas disappear, okay? And this is, you know, in some senses, it's great, because those forests happen also to be full of endemic species. They also happen to be good wine-growing regions, according to Lee. But the, those forests are, are really spectacular in terms of concentration of central or southwestern Chinese endemism. And so in that sense, we have this wonderful situation where, you know, what child doesn't have a panda bear as she or he, he grows up? Nobody wants to see panda bears disappear, and the panda acts as an umbrella for a whole bunch of other species. We'll talk about that more later. Um, there are lots of other examples. Here um, near Bali, there is a, a small island that's being used as a conservation area simply to recover this one species of starling. Um, or the Javan rhino study and conservation area, critically endangered species, and you either do well by it in this place and a few others, or it's gone. Uh, in the US, we have the, the redwoods, which is a, a species of tree, quite unique. Um, and here is you know, a, an NGO that's built around this one species. And here in Ethiopia, uh, the wolf. And as I understand it, it's in two national parks, correct? So when I look at the, at the uh, web page for Bali National Park, a lot of what I see is wolf. Okay? But obviously, a lot more gets done than just wolves. Okay? Now another, another set of reasons, and obviously all of these things overlap and intermix, but another set of reasons revolves around conserving unique habitats, biomes, ecosystems. So here are the Ruanzori Mountains National Park in Uganda. Um, very close to where I live is the Tallgrass Prairie National Preserve. Uh, the Everglades, which is a big swamp system in southern Florida. But notice we're not talking about individual species. We're talking about systems. Corkscrew Swamp Sanctuary, uh, the Bwindi Impenetrable Forest National Park in Uganda. So that's another set of reasons. A really unique place which frequently coincides with um, a biome or some, something that's unique to that place. Now distinguishing which of the single species or which of the ecosystem focused uh, efforts actually was planned and decreed based on biodiversity criteria broadly. That's a little harder. So these are kind of guesstimates about which ones, but as I looked at, at conservation sites, um, I could kind of pick out some that cited um, a lot of endemism and a lot of species diversity um, in the original reasoning for the protected area. Don't debate the actual areas with me because I was guessing. Um, but here, a National Biodiversity Conservation Area, I think in Vietnam, or maybe it was Laos. 
But then we come to these other criteria. Um, Mount St. Helens, really unique volcano in the northwestern U.S. And here's its page with the U.S. Uh, Forest Service, Mount St. Helens National Volcanic Monument. Um, but notice here, recreation, bicycling, camping, cabins, climbing, fishing, hiking, horseback riding, camping, hunting, nature viewing, um, OHV, off, off-highway off vehicles, off highway vehicles uh, outdoor learning, et cetera, et cetera. So notice that this place is getting used for a lot of other things. Um, here, a play, uh, du dual World Heritage Area in New Zealand, the Tongariro National Park, ski or board Mount Ruapehu. Okay? This isn't a criticism, this is reality. Of those 105,000 protected areas around the world, some of them do biodiversity. Some of them do biodiversity along the way to doing something else. Okay? Uh, here, you know, Fishing Glacier National Park in the U.S. Um, Yosemite is, is clearly a place that people just go to see. Okay? It's a scenic beauty. It's an amazing place. Um, or here, a, a national park in, in South Korea with a Buddhist temple in the midst of it. So all I'm, all I'm throwing out to you is that these things happen for a lot of reasons. The fact that there's a Buddhist temple in the middle of a conservation area, or the fact that a particular area got decreed because it has panda bears, is not a problem. It's an opportunity. But it has to be used strategically where, you know, nobody's going to say, ah, let the panda bear go extinct. And probably nobody's going to say, oh, let's extract all of the petroleum that's sitting under Yosemite National Park. So you can use these other criteria as um, proxies, as, as, as uh, reasoning. But it's, it's worth bearing in mind how these things get started. So what we're going to do kind of in the next little bit is we're going to get vignettes of different conservation-related efforts from your six instructors. Maybe we'll put one or two of them off till later. Um, but we're going to get just little vignettes of, of conservation activity and give you some kind of more, more specific examples of how and why these things get started. Okay?